In this video, we're gonna talk about the best options that are available for you to get those extra 30 credit hours that you need to become a CPA and meet the 150 credit hour requirement. One of the requirements for you to become a certified public accountant is to get the 150 educational credit hours required for you to receive your CPA license. This is a particular challenge for those students who are looking to become CPAs but only have about 120 credit hours once they graduate from college with their undergrad degree. And you're then stuck with trying to figure out what are the best options for getting an additional 30 credit hours so that you can meet the 150 credit hour requirement for your CPA license. This, getting the extra 30 hours that you need to meet the 150 credit hour requirement is one of the more popular questions I get on the channel. And I thought it would be good for us to talk about what's out there. What I've done is some research on what I think are viable options that are available for everybody to go out and do to get the additional 30 credit hours that you need to become a CPA, a certified public accountant. And some of these are more popular and followed by a lot of other people. And some of these other options are less popular and not known to everybody. So in this video, we're gonna go over what they are. And I have chose one option that I think is the best option for getting the additional 30 credit hours. So we're gonna talk about what that best option is. And I'm not gonna lie, it actually was pretty hard to figure out what's the best option. I think there's a couple of really good options, but there is one that I think stands out the most. We're gonna go through all of them so that way you know what they are and you can make a decision for yourself what is gonna be the best viable option for you. So you have a few options here, and I blow them down to six. Going and getting your master's degree, doing a double major in your undergrad, adding a minor in your undergrad, going and going to a community college to get college credits, going online and doing online courses from home to get your college credits, and then taking the CLEP exam, which is the college level examination program, which we'll talk about. And there's actually one more too. You could go back and you could get a, uh, you could go back and I think do a, another bachelor's, get a second bachelor's degree, but we're not gonna talk about that one in this video. Let's just call it D6, right? So out of the six, I've tried to ration myself based on what the cost is, uh, how convenient it is, and whether you're gonna be able to actually use the credits by taking one of these options. And I've come down to what I think is the best choice for all of you out there looking to get credits to uh, meet the 150 credit hour requirement. And that is online college level courses, okay? Now, hear me out because there's some caveats to all of these options. And even though I think online college courses are the best option of the six, it might be better for you to consider another one of these options based on your journey and where you are and trying to become a CPA. So let's talk about them, okay? Before though, before we get into each one of these options, we have to talk about state boards. So listen up. State boards. You have to remember that state boards are going to approve your college credits based on their requirements. You need to talk to the state board to make sure that you're familiar with what they expect in terms of the type of courses they want to see and where you can get these credits from so that you don't spend money getting credits from one of these options and then your particular state board doesn't actually accept it. Now, I will try to do my best in this video to guide you on which option will most likely qualify for the state board that you're in. It's not like it's a, a real big challenge for the state boards, most of them are gonna accept university level courses, but you gotta make sure it's the right type of courses. You gotta make sure they're courses that you haven't taken before that are related to the business finance world that qualify under what they wanna see for your application. So I encourage you to just reach out to your own particular state board and ask questions is what I'm trying to say, okay? Because I will tell you that some of these options might not go as well as some state boards versus others, so you gotta make sure you're talking to your state board. Let's jump into the first one, master's degrees. I think this is the most popular choice that most people take when they want to go get the additional 30 credit hours to become a CPA. That entails going to a university or institution, enrolling in their master's degree program, 
paying the money associated with that institution to be in that program and essentially doing another one to two years of college, right? So you go to college and you take four years of college and you get about 120 credit hours and then you graduate, you have this great moment where you're at graduation and you're like, I've done it, it's awesome. Then you realize you gotta get 30 more credit hours. And then you say, fine, let me go get my master's degree. Why? Because for one, a master's degree is very marketable on your resume. It helps you stand out because you don't just have a bachelor's, you have a master's. You get to specialize in a field of study more than anybody who's just graduated with a bachelor's degree. Now you're doing a couple of extra years just to specialize in a particular area. And there's a lot of benefit to that, right? You know, it helps you with earnings. So when you go out and get a job, you might have more um, opportunity for promotion and higher earnings because you have a master's degree as well. And having a master's gives you a couple of extra years to really have a deeper understanding of a subject matter knowledge, right? So if you have a master's in accountancy, you are gonna be able to walk into the workforce if you decide to work or as an entrepreneur, go and be an entrepreneur with a deeper understanding of accounting than somebody who just went to school and graduated with a bachelor's degree. You've got a couple of years of really understanding the ins and outs of how accounting works and some of the specific uh, areas of accounting that will be beneficial to customers, clients, organizations, and the like. So that's also another benefit of going through a couple of extra years under a master's program to uh, get your, your additional 30 credit hours. There's a lot of arguments to be made for why you could go and get a master's. There are also arguments for why you should not get a master's. One of those reasons being that it's very costly, depending on where you go. By the time you do your one to two years of master's degree, you finish and you graduate with your master's degree, you should have the additional 30 credit hours that you need to become a CPA, meet the CPA requirement. So that's why it's an option, but I don't call it the best option, primarily because it is expensive to do at most places and there are other options that are out there that are less costly. Again, this all depends on where you decide to go and get your master's degree, but for the most part, I think this is the more expensive option of the six. However, at the same time, it's the more expensive, it is most safe route to go and get these additional 30 credit hours because you know when you enroll in a master's program you're going to be going to, at an institution that most likely accredited and you have advisors there that you can communicate with you can tell them hey i'm looking to get my cpa license and they can try to work with you on making sure you have the right courses in your master's program that'll help you to meet that yada 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 I will say that if you're looking to get a master's degree just to meet the additional 30 credit hour requirements that you need to get your CPA license, you're probably overpaying a little bit for doing that. So it's important for you to try to understand too what may be some of the other reasons you wanna go out and get a master's degree before you enroll in that program to meet your additional 30 credit hour requirement. Maybe it's because you just had that goal for yourself to always have a master's. Maybe there's some reason that a master's degree will be needed for you in your career path. So you know you need to get that master's degree. But again, if you're just looking to get the 30 credit hour options, I would look at some of these other options too before you just decide to go roll in a master's program. So, master's degree is a good one, but let's talk about some of these other options for those of you who are not looking to go enroll in a master's program and want to just get the credit hours on a more flexible path. Option number two, community colleges. So let's talk about this. So, a community college, you can go to and you can take accounting and business related courses to receive extra credits that may qualify toward the 150 credit hour requirement. Now, it's important to understand that you have to be careful when you're doing this option because not all state boards allow community college credits to be counted towards your qualification, okay? So I would say for all the options that are here, this is the option that you have to be working with your state board closer to make sure that they are understanding what you're trying to do in terms of community college and the credit hours and the courses you're planning to take so that they can give you a yes or no to the extent that they can give it to you to um, let you know if that's an option you should take. In some cases, with some state boards, they will accept your community college credit hours under some circumstances. In other state boards, 
what they'll say is that you have to transfer those community college credits to an actual university or college institution for them to count towards your requirement. So you want to understand what they expect of you to make sure that those college courses uh, count towards your requirement and your eligibility before you start spending a bunch of money and taking all these courses to get the 30 credit hours. And then, you know, the last thing you want to do is submit them and then they say they don't accept them. So make sure you're working with your state boards if you're thinking about going to a community college to get these credit hours. Of course, the benefit of going to a community college is that it's less expensive than going to a university or institution to get the additional 30 credit hours. So again, just make sure that you're working with your state boards, that you know what courses you're trying to take, that they say, sounds like it would work, or if they say, no, we wouldn't accept that, then at least you know, okay, I gotta look for at another option here. In some circumstances though, community college courses can work. So I would look into this option to see if it works for you in terms of getting the additional credit hours that you need. I would just talk to your state boards and see if this is a viable option for you, but it is something that I've heard people do. Could be a good option for you. Double major. So this next option, double major in your undergrad studies. I kind of, I like this option. It's, it's not my favorite option i think for this video like i said the favorite option is online study courses which we'll talk about in a second but i do like this option because for those of you who are early in your uh, undergrad studies and you know that you want to go ahead and pursue being a cpa right a lot of you who are watching the channel and already thinking okay what's a cpa i'm in my freshman year if i make the decision now i can set myself up to have the most success in getting my cpa license Double major might be a good option for you because it allows you to go ahead and get more credits while you're already in school. So by the time you graduate, you're going to have all the credits that you need, probably more than 150 credit hours, but at least at a minimum, the 150 credit hours. And once you graduate with your bachelor's degree, you've already got that requirement met. I like this option for that. I think what happens more often than not is that students they go into accounting and they go into their freshman and sophomore year and they have no clue that they want to pursue being a CPA. Then they finally get into their junior and senior year and say, okay, I want to pursue becoming a CPA, but they go ahead and just graduate with the accounting degree, not realizing that they need to go now and figure out how to get 30 more credit hours. And now they have to go pursue going and get a master's or figuring out ways they can get the extra 30 credit hours that they need. So this is really more of a proactive approach approach, which is to say, let me go ahead and double major so I can have all the credit hours done by the time I graduate with my bachelor's degree. I like it for these reasons. The reason I don't like this option is because it is an expensive option. Just imagine paying double the cost in your undergrad degree to make sure you get these under these additional 30 credit hours. It can be expensive depending on where you go. So that's the one drawback. I like that it's a proactive approach but it is a drawback. So let me tell you this next option, which was a contender for number one. So, um, you know, that's why I like this option more than the double major option, which is taking a minor. So let's talk about that. Adding a minor. And adding a minor while you're in your undergrad studies, I think is a very good option for you to consider. It is, just like the double major, it's a proactive approach. You can add a minor to your major. So you're majoring in accounting and you're minoring in finance, you're minoring in IT, management information systems, uh, you're minoring in business law, something like that. And why I like it is because for one, it's not as expensive as doing a double major. It is a little bit more costly because you're adding additional credit hours onto your program while you're in your undergrad but you're only getting enough extra credit hours that should help you to meet the additional 30 credit hours you need as opposed to taking on a whole double load like you would in a double major. So um, it's a proactive approach. It's saying, hey, you know, I'm in my, I'm a freshman, I'm a sophomore, maybe even a junior, and you're adding on another study as a minor to give you some additional courses while you're in school still. And um, by the time you graduate, maybe you'll have 130, the 150 credit hours versus 120. 
I really like this option too because it is an option that I follow. Although I didn't follow this intentionally thinking, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get these additional 30 credit hours because I want to become a CPA. I just had heard a story about why it should be good to add a minor and I went and I decided to add a minor in management information systems and ended up graduating with my bachelor's degree with 149 credits. So I was just one credit short of meeting 150 hours, but because I was so close, I didn't need to go, I didn't feel pressure to have to go and get a master's degree just to pass the CP, just to become a CPA. I like this option because again, it's proactive and it's not as expensive as a double major. You can get to 150 hours if you work with your advisor and say, hey, before I graduate, I need to have 150 credit hours. So maybe in a semester you're taking you know, extra courses just to make sure that by the time you graduate, you have 150 credit hours. I really like this option. I personally would have given this the best option for this video, but the reason I didn't do that is because most people I find have already graduated and once they graduate with like 120 credit hours, they're now trying to figure out how do I go and get the additional 30 credit hours. And this video is specifically made with those types of per people in mind, which is I. it's too late for me to go add a minor. I've already graduated. What's my best option for going to get the additional 30 credit hours that I need? This wouldn't be a good option because you would have already graduated and it'd be too late for you to add a minor. But if you're in school still, I would strongly consider this option as the best option for you for making sure you meet the additional 30 credit hour requirements. Let's talk about the next option, which is the CLEP exam. The CLEP exam. The CLEP exam, the College Level Examination Program. This is a program that allows students to go ahead and take a series of exams and qualify for college credits based on things that they already know, whether that be through independent study or experience. There's several different tests that you can take and once you take them, you can use that any passing scores that you have toward college credits at a lot of colleges and universities across the United States. So if you're somebody who's in a situation where maybe either in college or before you're about to go to college, you look up the college board, college level examination program, and you take the exam and get college credits toward that, those college credits may also qualify as credits that you can use to meet the 150 credit hour requirement. Now, I personally don't know anyone who's done this, but I online in my research, I see that there are some articles out there that people are saying you can do this as an option. So again, this is another one of those options that if you're someone who, who is looking into doing this or you qualify for doing this, just make sure that you're talking to the state boards to understand what they expect for using these types of credits towards your requirement and your eligibility because you don't want to think that they might qualify and then your particular state board say, oh, for these reasons, you can't use CLEP exam um, credits. So just make sure you're working with your state board. Also, I would do research and look up what the CLEP exam is and when you can take it. But this is a good option. If you are someone who knows, you know, a lot, you're smart, you've taken the exam, you've got some additional credit hours, and those credit hours could then help you qualify toward getting the 150 credit hours that you need to get your CPA license. So this is also another option that's out there. I encourage you to go look up more about the CLEP exam. It looks like the cost is about $100 to take the exam. And I think that's probably per section that you take. There's like 20 to 30 sections that you can take. But again, this is an option that you need to look into working with your state board and understanding what they need to see or receive or they need to let you know about before you go take these exams and think that they're gonna to qualify to where your additional 30 credit hour requirement. Just call them and say, hey, I'm thinking about taking the CLEP exam and I'm wondering what I need to know to see if it will qualify for me to get the additional 30 credit hours that I need. If you are someone who, who qualifies or who has done this and you already received college credits for these tests that you've taken, these may be another good option and an expensive option for you to get the additional 30 credit hour requirement that you need. So I wanted to make sure I included this on the list as something that's a viable option that's out there, 
But again, if you want to know more about this, I encourage you to go look online, do your research, talk to your state boards and try to understand how this could be a good option for you to get those additional 30 credit hour that you need. Let's talk about the last option, online college courses. This is the option that I'm picking as the winner for this video as best option for you to go get the additional 30 credit hour requirements that you need. And that is because this is the best option for those of you out there who are looking for a cost effective option that's flexible and that will qualify toward the additional 30 credit hours that you need. It's going online and finding institutions, universities that are accredited institutions that offer online pay as you go courses, meaning you can just take courses at your own leisure, receive college credit courses, and not be fully enrolled within the degree program that they offer. So I like this option because you can go to an actual institution, you can look at the class that you need, and you can just pay for that one class, take that one class, and then receive credits for that one class. And your class might cost you a few hundred dollars, but you'll receive three credits for taking the course. So I think um, I've looked into this and I've actually used this because like I mentioned earlier, I needed one credit hour to just meet my 150 credit hour requirement. So I went online to a university and just took one course that cost me, I think it was about 350 to $400, something like that. And I got three additional credit courses for that, um, taking that course. So I like this option because it's flexible. You can do it from home. You can do it at your own pace. Well, not necessarily at your own pace. You have a certain window of time that you need to finish your course once you enroll and take it but you can work at it at your own pace. You're not required to show up to class and be there for a certain amount of time. You just kind of go through the course material, read the syllabus, do the courses, take the exams and tests, and then within a few weeks, month, you can pass the class and then receive the credits. And I think if you're somebody who's looking to do 30 credit hours, it's just a series of doing that over a couple times and then you can receive the 30 credit hours that you need. And the good thing about it is, is that this, when you go to a university, you can do your research and take these courses at an accredited university so you know that the courses are accredited and that they qualify. So when you submit them to the state boards, most likely they're gonna accept them because they come from a recognizable institution. I think this is the best option too because this is a good option for those of you who can't do one of the options like double major or add a minor because you've already graduated, but you still don't wanna go do a master's program either. So you're kind of in the middle. You may be working and you're starting to make some money and you're saying, I need to get these additional courses and I don't have time to go get a master's degree. So let me just work and then take a few courses at night or here and there or study over the weekend because I have the flexible option to do so to get my additional 30 credits over a period of time. So I really like this option for that. And I think that it's something that you should definitely look into. Again, I'm gonna always say, you should check with your state board. You wanna check with your state board and make sure that you don't uh, take a course that you've already taken, right? You can't take a course that you already have taken in your undergrad and then try to you know, double it up to receive the additional credits. The state board is gonna say, no, you've already taken that course, you need to take a different course. So it's good to talk to them so that they can look at what you maybe have already submitted to them and then um, say, well, you really would benefit from having courses in these areas and then you can go to these online institutions and see which one of them offer courses that you need to get and then take them at your own flexibility, your own schedule, your own time and less expensive than having to enroll in a full degree program. So um, I think this is the winner for best option for getting the additional 30 credit hours that you need and I encourage you to go look into it. And you know what? Just for the sake of making sure that we are always delivering value on this channel, I'm gonna go ahead and link a couple of institutions that I have found that offer these courses so that you can go and you can look to get these additional credit, credit courses yourself. All I ask is that you hit the like button if you like this video and you think it's resourceful for you and add a comment, subscribe to the channel, and that'll help us to do a lot more in terms of growing the channel and making more videos like this to help you. So the winner for me on this one is online college courses. 
look into it hit the links below hit the like button you know what you think there's a lot of articles out there that are talking about how the 150 credit hour requirement is a roadblock it's a barrier for getting more cpas into the profession and some people are arguing that they do away with the 150 credit hours altogether. so leave a comment and tell me what you think yeah, you think that in this day and age where we have all of this new technology and all of these uh, new ways of getting information that we still need to make students and pro young professionals or professionals go through having 150 credit hours to become a CPA or should they just drop the extra 30 credit hours and only make it 120? Think we see the numbers in CPAs going down and down, especially when we're talking about um, diverse, ethnically diverse CPAs. So, um, and we're trying to get more people to want to, to walk into the profession. So, you know, when you've gone through four, four years of studying and then you can take the CPA exam and pass it and then you can get work experience, I think the extra 30 credit hours don't make that much of a difference in the big scheme of things. But let me know what you think, man. Um, hopefully this video just helps you to come up with your own rationale of options that are out there for getting the additional 30 credit hours. Let me know if it helps you. Let me know if you're gonna choose one of these options to help you get the additional 30 credit hours that you need. And uh, that's the end of this one right here. So make sure you subscribe and check out one of these videos that are gonna be popping up like here or here.